this is the stage and film actor Henry Fonda. He starred in over 81 films and 21 plays during his 50-year career. Henry Jane Fonda was born on May the 16th, 1905 to his parents, William Bryce Fonda and wife Elma Jane Fonda. Henry was born in this rented house at 622 West Division Street in Grand Island, Nebraska. At the time of Henry's birth, his dad, William Funda, was working as a salesman for the Unita Biscuit Company. Now, shortly after Henry's birth, the family moved to Omaha and in a few years settled at 5108 California Street. Mr. Funda opened a printing shop and Alma became involved in the Omaha Community Playhouse as an amateur thespian. Her husband also invested in the playhouse. The Fundas will have their second child, a daughter, Harriet McNeil Funda, on March the 18th, 1907, two months before Henry's second birthday. Two years later, on the 18th of September, 1909, the Fundas had their third and final child, a daughter, Roberta Jane Funda. They will call her Jane. Now, by the age of four, the family had begun calling Henry Hank. Now, Henry, or Hank, loved to write stories so much that by the age of 10, he had already won a short story contest. And by the age of 12, Hank was working at his dad's printing shop after school. He had his heart set on becoming a journalist. He attended Omaha, Dundee, and Miller Park grade schools, and in 1923, Fonda will graduate from Omaha Central High School. After high school, he'll enter the University of Minnesota to study journalism and fulfill his dream. He worked part-time for the telephone company while in school. In 1925, after two years of college, he quit and returned to Omaha, hoping to find a job in journalism. While he was still looking for a job, a friend of his mother Alma, Dorothy Brando, the mother of Marlon Brando, who was still a child at the time, was looking for a young man to play the part of Ricky in You and I. Fonda auditioned and won the part. At first he was unsure of himself, but soon grew to love acting. However, his dad didn't approve of his son's career and insisted that he take a job as a clerk in a credit company to support himself. The next season in 1926, Fonda appeared in Merton of the Movies at the Playhouse. His dad had attended the performance and was convinced that his son was indeed an actor. And in December of that year, Henry will perform in another play, He Who Gets Slapped, with his two sisters, Jane and Harriet, both who performed at the Playhouse. In 1927, Henry got a break when he wrote a sketch for actor George Billings, who was a leading impersonator of Abraham Lincoln. Fonda wrote himself into the script as Lincoln's secretary. He toured the Varville circuit for three months with George Billings. Returning to Omaha after the tour, he became the assistant director of the Omaha Community Playhouse. In 1928, Fonda decided to quit the Playhouse and move east to further his career. He began association with the University Players Guild, where he'll appear in small parts at first and later bigger ones. In 1929, Fonda met actress Margaret Sullivan while performing with the Players Guild. It'll be two years later on December the 25th, 1931, while they were performing at the Congress Hotel Ballroom in Baltimore, that 26-year-old Henry Jane Fonda married 22-year-old Margaret Brooke Sullivan. The couple moved to New York after their play closed. Now, however, they separated after two months of marriage, but it'll be March 1933, after 15 months of marriage, that they'll divorce. In later years, Funda said he almost went crazy after losing Margaret Sullivan. 
Margaret will go on to marry three more times and become a film actress. She'll be nominated for the Academy Award for her performance in Three Comrades with Robert Taylor. In later life, Sullivan will lose her hearing and become depressed. She'll be committed for observation in a mental institution. And on January the 1st, 1960, at 5.30 p.m., she'll be found in bed, barely alive, unconscious in a New Haven motel room with the script of Sweet Love Remembered by her side. She passed away 30 minutes later. It was never determined if she overdosed on barbiturates on purpose or accidentally. She is interred at the St. Mary's Whitechapel Episcopal Churchyard in Lancaster, Virginia. Margaret Sullivan was 50 years old. While Fonda was separated from Margaret Sullivan, he roomed with three other wannabe actors, including James Stewart, who will become his closest friend for 50 years. In 1934, critics began noticing him when he appeared in the review, New Faces, doing comic skits with Imogene Coker. In October the 5th, 1934, Henry received news that his mother Alma had passed away at her home after a blood clot in her leg went to her heart. She's interred at the Forest Lawn Memorial Park, Omaha, Nebraska. Mrs. Fonda was 55 years old. By the end of 1934, Henry got his big break when he was cast as the farmer in The Farmer Takes a Wife. The play was commercially and critically acclaimed. The next year, 1935, Fox Film Corporation decided to bring The Farmer Takes a Wife to film. Fonda was picked to play the farmer in the film that he had played on stage. His co-star was Janet Gaynor. On 7 October 1935, exactly one year and two days after his mother's death, his dad William Fonda passed away of a heart attack at his daughter's home. Mr. Fonda is buried next to his wife at Forest Lawn Memorial Park in Omaha. He was 56 years old. Henry always said that he regretted his parents didn't live long enough to see his acting career. In 1936, immediately after filming The Farmer Takes a Wife, Fonda will begin The Trail of the Lonesome Pine with Fred McMurray. Now, this film helped Fonda to become recognized as a film star. Independent producer Walter Wanger offered Fonda a contract after that film. And on September the 16th, 1936, Henry Fonda will marry his second wife, Frances Ford Seymour. They had met while Fonda was in England at the Durham Studios doing Wings of the Morning with co-star actress Annabella. Frances was a widow woman losing her husband one year before meeting Fonda. She had a five-year-old daughter named Frances Brokaw, nicknamed Pan. One year and three months after marrying, Henry and Frances will have a daughter, Lady Seymour Fonda. They call Jane. Jane was born December the 1st, 1937. She'll grow up to follow in her daddy's footsteps as an actress. She will become a successful actress, winning two Best Actress Academy Awards, one in 1973 for Kluke and 1979 for Coming Home. She will marry three times. Jane has two kids plus one adopted daughter. Jane will become known as a political activist, supporting numerous causes. The next year, in 1938, Henry Fonda will star with Betty Davis in Jezebel. Betty will win the Academy Award for her performance. Henry once said, I've been a close friend of Betty Davis for 38 years, and I have the cigarette burns in my furniture to prove it. 
1939, Henry Fonda will appear in his first film directed by John Ford called Young Mr. Lincoln, where Fonda played Lincoln with Marjorie Weaver as Mary Todd. Also in 1939, Fonda will play Frank James with Tyrone Power as Jesse in its movie, Jesse James. The next film was Drums Along the Mohawk with Claudette Colbert, also directed by John Ford. The next year, 1940, Fonda will star as Tom Jode in one of his best films, The Grapes of Raft. Jane Darrell will play Ma Jode, head of an Oklahoma family forced to leave their farms during the Great Depression. The movie follows the trials of a family traveling to California in order to find work. Fonda will be nominated for the Academy Award for his part as Tom Jode. He will lose out, however, to his best friend, Jimmy Stewart, in The Philadelphia Story. But also in 1940, Fonda will star in The Return of Frank James with Gene Tierney, who was one of Fonda's favorite co-stars. Now, on February the 23rd, 1940, Henry and Francis will have a son, Peter Henry Fonda. Peter will also become an actor, best known for his hit role in 1969's cult classic, Easy Rider. Peter will be nominated for Best Writer, Story, and Screenplay for Easy Rider. Peter will also be nominated for Best Actor in 1998 for Yulee's Gold. He married three times, had two children. Both his kids are actors, Justine and Bridget. Sadly, Peter passed away on August the 16th, 2019, in Los Angeles from lung cancer. He was cremated at his request. Actor and father, Peter Henry Fonda, was 79 years old. In 1941, the next year after Peter was born, Henry will star along with Barbara Stanwyck and Charles Coburn in a screwball comedy where Stanwyck and her dad, played by Coburn, met Fonda's character on board an ocean liner, intending to fleece Fonda out of his money. But things go wrong when Stanwyck falls in love with her mark. The next year, 1942, Fonda played a busboy in love with a nightclub singer, Lucille Ball, who becomes paralyzed after being attacked by her gangster boyfriend in The Big Streets. The next year, 1943, Fonda will star with Dana Andrews in The Oxbow Incident, nominated for the Oscar of Best Picture. The townsfolk hangs the wrong men for cattle thief and discovers their mistake after it was too late. By this time, World War II was going on, and Funda said that he didn't want to be in a fake war in a studio. Before the U.S. entered the war, Funda was already raising money for the defense of Britain against the Nazis. He served three years, first as a quartermaster, third class, on the destroyer USS Statterly, and later as a lieutenant junior grade in air combat intelligence in the South Pacific. For his heroism, he won the Bronze Star and a presidential citation. He was discharged in 1944. After service, he returned to film as Wyatt Earp in John Ford's My Darling Clementine. Here, Wyatt Earp, Henry Fonda, holds the body of his brother Virgil, Tim Holt, as Morgan Earp, Ward Bond, looks on. In 1948, Fonda appeared in Fort Apache with John Wayne and Shirley Temple. This role showed a different side of Fonda's acting ability. His character of Lieutenant Colonel Owen Thursday shows a meaner and darker side. Also in 1948, he will star with his friend, James Stewart, for the first time in On Our Merry Way. After Stewart first returned from the Army after the war, 
He stayed with Fonda and his wife, Frances. Fonda's kids, Peter and Jane, called Stuart Uncle Jimmy. By the end of 1948, Fonda had returned to the stage in Mr. Roberts. During the show's run of 1,077 performances, he never missed a performance, not one. He said this was one of his favorite roles. For years, his marriage to Frances Seymour had been rocky. She had mental problems for most of the marriage. Finally, she was committed to the Gregg House in Bacon, New York, one of the best mental hospitals in the nation. In February of 1950, while still on tour with Mr. Roberts, Fonda asked Francis for a divorce so that he could remarry. Ten days before her 42nd birthday, Francis Seymour Fonda committed suicide on April 15, 1950 while still a patient at the Craig House Institution. Fonda arranged for a quick private burial with only himself and Francis' mother in attendance. The children was not allowed to attend. They didn't even know where she was buried. They was told that their mother had died from heart trouble, probably to spare their feelings. However, 11-year-old Jane was showed a movie magazine by a school friend telling her about the suicide. But it'll be 10 more years before Peter will find out. Francis Seymour Fonda is buried in Ogdenburg Cemetery, Ogdenburg, New York. She was 42 years old. According to her daughter Jane, it's believed that her mother's mental problems stem from being abused as a child. It'll be eight months after his wife's death that 45-year-old Henry Fonda will marry 21-year-old Susan Blanchard on the 27th of December, 1950. Susan was best known as an actress with mostly unaccredited roles. She'll remain married to Fonda for six years divorcing in May of 1956. During their marriage, Fonda will adopt her daughter, Amy, from a previous relationship. And in 1951, Fonda will go back on the stage with Point of No Return. And in 1953, he'll be on Broadway in the Kane Mutiny Court Martial. In 1955, Fonda will be in the film version of Mr. Roberts, with James Cagney as the captain, William Powell as Doc in his last film performance, leaving it on a very high note, and Jack Lemon as Ensign Frank Palver, who will win the Academy Award for Best Supporting Actor. At Fonda's request, John Ford became the film's director. However, they had disagreed that prompted Ford to sucker punch Fonda. Fonda will never work for Ford again. Ford became ill during the filming and had to be replaced with a new director, Mervyn Leroy. The next year in May of 1956 is when Fonda and Susan Blanchard divorced. Peter Fonda said that they were living in Rome at the time when she came down the stairs for breakfast and told us. I was devastated, he said, and cried. She said, I'm too young and want to dance and tell jokes. She'll marry three more times and be Richard Widmart's last wife when he died. After Fonda's divorce, he was starved with Audrey Hepburn in War and Peace. During filming, Hepburn will introduce 48-year-old Fonda to a 22-year-old Italian countess after Fincetta. They will marry the next year on March 10, 1957, at his brick townhouse located at 151 East 74th Street in New York City. Also in 1957 will be the only time that Fonda acted as a movie producer in Twelve Angry Men, in which he 
not only produced but starred in as the juror who saved the life of an accused. It was low budgeted and filming was finished in 17 days. It was praised worldwide and received several nominations and awards. That same year, Fonda was starred with Anthony Perkins in The Ten Star. Fonda will be a former sheriff that will advise a young sheriff, Anthony Perkins, on how to handle bad situations. In 1959, while still married to the county's Franchetta, Fonda will co-produce a short-lived TV show called The Deputy. He didn't really want to do the series, so he would only make short appearances in each episode, once at the beginning, and then he'd ride off on his horse, and he'd return near the end. In 1961, Countess Franchetta divorced Henry for another man. However, she will not remarry. The next year, in 1962, Fonda will return to Broadway in A Gift of Time with Olivia de Havilland. It was the first time they ever worked together in a play. In 1963, Fonda appeared with Maureen O'Hara in the movie Spencer's Mountain. The movie is about growing up on Spencer's Mountain, later adopted to television as The Waltons. And then the next year it'll be Sex and the Single Girl with Lauren McCall, Tony Curtis, and Natalie Wood. In 1965, Fonda was starring in a World War II epic in Harm's Way with John Wayne and Patricia Neal. His character was Admiral Chester Nimitz. After that year, on December 3, 1965, 60-year-old Henry Fonda will marry 33-year-old Shirley May Adams. Shirley was a former flight attendant for American Airlines. Here she is as the attendant on the left on a flight in 1957. Shirley and Fonda will remain married the rest of Fonda's life. Two years after their marriage, Henry will explore the dark side in a western such as Once Upon a Time in the West, where he'll play a mean stone cold killer. As a change of pace, he will perform with comedian Lucille Ball in Years, Mine, and Ours. Funda's daughter Jane stated that her dad was deeply in love with Lucille Ball and that during filming they were very close. The movie was based on a true story. They said that Lucy became so close to the Beardsley family, for whom the movie was portrayed, that she treated the whole family to a trip to Disneyland. And in 1966, Funda will be in a western where he plays the head of a team of card players in A Big Hand for the Little Lady that starred Joan Woodward. In 1970, Fonda will be in the third and final film with his friend James Stewart, entitled Cheyenne Social Club. Stewart was first offered the film, and he wanted Fonda to play the part of Hartley. It'll be the only movie with a nude scene that Jimmy Stewart was ever in. In 1971 and 72, Fonda took another try at TV with the Smith family, where Fonda served as the family patriarch. Two years later, 1974, Fonda will be in Clarence Darrell, a made-for-TV movie. Fonda will earn an Emmy nomination for his performance. In 1975, Fonda will play Clarence Darrell in a one-man show on stage. Before one of his performances, he collapsed backstage and was diagnosed with a weak heart. He had to have a pacemaker installed. Now this was the beginning of frequent hospital stays for Fonda, but he continued to try and work. The very next year, he again played Admiral Chester Nimitz in Midway, about naval battles in the Pacific during World War II. All of the characters in the movie were real people except the aide to Nimitz, played by Charlton Heston. 
During the scenes of Admiral Nimitz, Fonda kept his hand folded because the real Nimitz had lost one of his fingers. In 1979, Fonda did a cameo in Wanda, Nevada as a grisly old prospector. It was the only time that Henry will be in a film with his son Peter. On March the 31st, 1981, Henry Fonda received the Academy Award for his lifetime achievements. His award was presented by actor Robert Redford. In December 1981, 76-year-old Henry Fonda was starred with 74-year-old Katherine Hepburn in On Golden Pond. Henry's daughter Jane purchased the rights to the play specifically for her dad. Jane played the daughter of her dad's character. The on-screen depiction of their relationship, she said, closely resembled their own. On Golden Pond will be the second most grossing film of that year. Henry Fonda will win the Academy Award for his performance. Fonda co-starred with Hepburn and had never met her before making this film. Hepburn also won the Academy Award for Best Actress. Fonda's daughter Jane will be nominated. It'll be the only time that Henry and Jane work together in a movie. It's been said that the old hat that Fonda wore in the film was given to him by Hepburn. It belonged to Spencer Tracy. Jane's son, Troy Garrett, had an unaccredited role as the Jetty Boy, making this three generations of Fondas in one film. Jane will accept the award for her dead as he was too sick to attend. After On Golden Pond, Fonda will make his final TV movie, Summer Soltis, with co-star Myrna Loy. They had never worked together before, this will also be Myrna Loy's last movie. Fonda once said of his children, They made it on their own. I didn't help them or discourage them. The success they had is their own. However, he forgot to say it is possible that their acting talents, or at least part of their talent, was inherited from him. And he also forgot to say that he gave them help by giving them his name. Now, Henry Fonda stars located at 6126 Hollywood Boulevard. The imprint of hands and footprints in cement are at Grumman's Chinese Theater in Los Angeles. When Fonda wrote his last will and testament, he left his estate to his wife Shirley of 16 years except for 200000 left to his adopted daughter, Amy, that he had adopted during his marriage to Susan Blanchard. Referring to his daughter and son, Peter and Jane, he explained, My decision is not in any sense of a measure of my deep affection for them, noting that they were financially independent. He said he was providing primarily for his wife and daughter because they were dependent on him for their support. This is Shirley, Jane, Peter, and Amy speaking about their dead after his death. On the 12th of August, 1982, at his Los Angeles home among wife and children, Henry Jane Funda passed away from heart disease deriving from prostate cancer. His legacy that he leaves behind is his children and grandchildren, a generation of actors. His ashes at his request were scattered to the wind. He was 77 years old.